Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, you see that we've, uh, in the last video, that we've got our MOT passed and we're on the road. First things first, we're at a home education club for ESA. Uh, they have these dotted around the country and they're great ways of getting your kids involved with other children and stuff. Nobody in here yet, because all the kids have gone outside to collect flowers and stuff like that because they're making watercolours. Um, and Isa has just gone to shoot into the toilet. This one here, we use the kitchen, we make things and that kind of stuff. So actually fantastic places to be. Whilst Isa's in there, having a couple of hours of fun. There's Mister, and he's doing his schoolwork. Looks like with that big thick book, that's maths schoolwork. So he's getting his GCSE stuff done. There's the park. So that's places. the different ways that we um, kind of home, not even home, road uh, school the children. I mean, there's so much more to it. You know, obviously, with James uh, being 15 and Anissa only being seven, we do it in a, in very different ways for each of them. And through the journey with us, we'll we'll kind of show you how how we homeschool, uh, well, road school, um, and let you a bit more into into things like that. While Issa was in after school, homeschool club, Bella was having a clip. Oh my word. Oh. <laughs> uh, looks like a different dog. <laughs> yeah, that's a full summer clip, all right. <laughs> oh dear. Here she comes. Hello, Bella. Hello. You're the same dog. Hello. Hello. Oh my word, where's your hair gone, dog? Hello. Hey, yeah. Hello. Hello, gorgeous. Back in Shrewsbury, with a puddle, because we're here to see Issa's bestest Hi. friend, Indy, and Morning. our friends, Alan and Kareen. They've Morning. been in uh, Croatia for. Hi. It's afternoon now. Morning. It's afternoon now. Morning. It's afternoon. Morning. Well, they've been in Croatia for the last month, uh, they've come back for a couple of weeks, and then they're going Morning. driving down Morning. to Italy for a month. Morning. So. We're all getting a chance to meet up and we're going on a delayed no Easter egg hunt as soon as we see them in the park. So we'll, let's have a look Daddy at Easter egg hunt. Hands, hands. Go on then you two. Morning. Going the wrong way? On the east egg hunt, the dog's like, what's going on? What's going on? Hello. 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 This is the fun bit, trying to share. <laughs> Come on, Indy. So we're back in the Moho at that East Egg Hunt. There's James. What are you doing, mate? Making some sandwiches for himself and Issa. Making sandwiches for Issa and himself. Um, while we wait for Leslie, I'm just uploading the latest YouTube video. Um, and we went for Leslie, who is in her house over there with one of her clients um she's going to be an online client for leslie's personal training business and then um look at the mess and then she's she's in a village near why where we were anyway so leslie's gone in to do a um personal training session with her face to face but after that it's all going to be down to online sales there's this is a half eating apple um so Online, so on, online personal training is what Leslie will be doing uh, to keep their money coming in. So Leslie's finished her session and look at the two big boxes we've got in the back. We've, the session on its own. <laughs> we've been to pick up uh, two new leisure batteries, which means we can take the leisure battery back that we borrowed uh, to, to add and mail. Um, all right, babe. And that means we can only see Finally, tonight, after we've dropped the leisure batteries off, we're going to go to where we're we going, Issa? Beach. The beach. Be a bit dark when we get there, but we're going to travel as far and close as we can to the beach and then beach. spend a good few <laughs> days in Wales. Beach. Bye. <laughs>
Okay, so, well, the earth moved in the night because it looks like the suspension at the back or the shock absorbers, something like that, have gone. Look at the difference. So, yeah. There she goes, all 7.3 meters of her. Oh, dragging on the floor. Yep. Here yeah. we go again. Let's see if we can raise it without taking the back off. Yeah, 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 all yeah. good, all good. All good. Keep, going. keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> Okay, so, so some of the friend of the family's had a look at it, and it very much looks like it's the torsion bar. So it's jacked up at the moment. Um, apparently, with a torsion bar, you're probably looking at just replacing the whole axle. Okay, so if anybody knows any millionaires, uh, send them our way. Well, this is the state of the most home today. I was going to say this is the state of my husband today. And this is the state of my husband. <laughs> about the same. We're all absolutely exhausted. Back in Brian George, as you can see. Axel is, well, broke from a well, pothole. Well, the good news is the place says we can take it in. They've actually got a motorhome on their ramp at the moment doing an axle for it. So the guys know what they're doing, possibly. Even if they don't, they have a good worth, worth a good shape. Hmm. So Craig's just tightening the wheel up and they're going to take all these blocks out to lower the motorhome back down again and see what the situation is. So fingers crossed again. So here we are, Saturday morning, fast lane autos. And they do all this kind of work uh, on motorhomes anyway. Look, they got an older one there, they got an older one there. And they got some cool stuff in here. Look at that trike. Awesome. So, here we are, let's see what happens. So, here we go. This is the problem with that. Two torsion bars completely sheared. But well, we've got an expert here. <laughs> right, so we're back in Liverpool at Brian's place. Looks like it's fixed, doesn't it? No. Just jacked up a few blocks under it just to keep it level uh, so that we can live in it. And Liverpool is going to be home for the next two to three weeks while parts come in. And those parts are going to cost, and the labour, three and a half thousand pounds. Oh dear. So, regardless of the problems we're facing, Life carries on, and we've got school work going on. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. I would stay at Brian's. So I've just said, any help you need, just let us know. You were straight onto it. <laughs> Cut the lawn, not a problem at all. Uh, give us something to do, keep out of trouble. We'll get this, uh, get this lawn cut for Brian. And here is the finished lawn. Okay, so it'll do. Set the nets up for Easter to play with. We get the football out. It's Sunday morning. And Issa's already done uh, schoolwork. She requested to do some schoolwork this morning, so she sat there in our bed with uh, the laptop her table out and uh, got on with some schoolwork. Leslie's taken the dog for a walk this morning. I uh, just want to show uh, my friend Phil. He was a subscriber. Look at that, Phil. Sydney FC, all the way up here in uh, Liverpool, UK. Um, so today, 
we're going to start moving forward away from the kind of negativity of uh, three and a half thousand pounds worth of torsion bars. We're going to start living some life. We're going to try and get out around Liverpool or something around Highton, around this local area, do some good things. Tomorrow we're going to have a drive around some garages in uh, the car with uh, Leslie's dad, seeing if they can do it cheaper than three and a half grand, um, and seeing if they can do it quicker, more importantly, because we've got a ferry to catch in about 16 days, 15, 16 days. Uh, so we don't really want to push it back. We'll have to if, if we need to. And we've got the dog's health certificate to, uh, to go and collect as well on the 20th of April. So we've got about 13 to 14 days to kind of get all done and get down there. So that's what we're going to do. Look for the torsion bars tomorrow. But as I said before, we're going to enjoy ourselves. You know, if life throws mud at you, pick it up, make something beautiful out of it. And we're going to do that and enjoy ourselves in Liverpool while we can and we'll share what we can see, what we do with you guys. Okay, we'll catch you soon. First stop, the park. Hi. Nice and easy, a uh, bit of fun for the kids. Well, well, James is watching the Liverpool game actually, so nice, easy, free fun for Issa. Well, Leslie's walking the dog somewhere behind us. <laughs> Here she is, crazy little dog as well. We've actually bought a harness for her. We just stopped her pulling. She is extremely annoyed because she's realized she can no longer pull, which is obviously a lot better for us. Come on, girl. Hello. Say hello to everybody. So just walking, oh, hello, motorhome. Just walking around the streets of uh, the suburbs of Liverpool. Can you tell the city girls maybe versus the little countryside traveller girl? Stands out like a sore thumb. <laughs> and the well, there's a dungarees and a woolly jumper. Does it look like our motor home? the boss of us and now she's trying to be the boss of the dog. Nope. <laughs> Hello. So, as promised, we're going to go out and do some stuff. You can see this is not a motorhome. Um, no corn is in. Easter in a car seat, Leslie driving in a harness. We borrowed Leslie's mum's car, we're on the insurance for the month while the motorhome's poorly. We have got an update on that actually. Um, obviously we did get a quote for three and a half thousand pounds, uh, 1800 pounds of which was labour charge. Um, we've hunted around, found some parts in Scotland managed to get the parts and instead of being £1,300 for the parts, £469, a slight difference. So we chose the £469 parts, including delivery, and they'll be here the day after tomorrow. And then we can, uh, we've got a mechanic um, who deals with trailers and trailer axles. So, um, so he's gonna have a look at that this week. So that two to three weeks has been cut down now to possibly by the end of the week, by the weekend, which is going to be brilliant. But today we're going to take the opportunity and we're going to get to the kind of the coast of Liverpool. Where are we going, darling? We're going to Otterspool Prom. Otterspool Prom. Okay. Um, which James, when he was younger, called, can we go to Badger's Beach? You know, <laughs> <laughs> we can go to Otterspool. Uh, so that's where we're going to go. Take the dog, take Isa, have a walk around Otterspool and uh, we'll see you there. When we said we were going to take you around beautiful Liverpool, we did mean rainy and wet. <laughs> beautiful Liverpool. Okay, we're going to so, the water uh, again. Over there is the River Mersey, and we're going to have a nice gentle walk okay, Dad, along there, yes? We're going to be a water family again. The water family again, oh dear. We're be a so water let's go, people. Again. So this is the Festival Gardens, just on along um, Otterspool Prom. So 
this is somewhere that I used to come to when I was little with my mum and dad. You can see the rivers just down there at the bottom of the hill. And you can walk right the way down that way. Doop, doop, doop. And that takes you to the city centre. Or if you walk in the opposite direction, that way, where's my finger gone? That way. <laughs> It'll take you to the actual prom itself where there's a cafe and um, an activity centre. So, a bit of a wet day, but it is what it is. We are in April after all. So, we just walk up here. So, there used to be a, um, a place here called uh, Pleasure Island, which we used to come to, and it was absolutely brilliant. And I don't know why it closed down, but it was such a shame that it did because it was uh, a really, really good good day out with the family so we used to have a huge soft play area called the works which was um like adult size i suppose and then there was a bowling alley there and a roller dome which was really good fun and we used to come as a family when i was younger and um enjoy some time together there it was it was so good and like i said i don't know why they closed it down but but none but they did so never mind but the festival gardens anyway is all was opened god in, probably in the 80s i think it was um and as you can see there's all the different parts of the garden um laid out into different sections so there's a japanese section um i'm just going to go and find craig and get him to come this way he's going the opposite direction craig Japanese gardens and in disrepair now, but they're amazing. Those are well. This is in the in the city centre. Nice bit of uh, peace, tranquility. Nice lovely walk for dogs for for anybody. Absolutely lovely. Now, Will, I can't show you the motorhome parking at the moment because I'm not sure where it is. Um, there is actually motorhome parking here as well at Festival Gardens. Uh, I've seen it on Park for Night. So you park up here and you've got some lovely, lovely walks around by you. Um, stay the night, stay the weekend. It's nice, uh, nice peaceful walks around. Unless it's severe and you yeah, might not be quite as peaceful. But, uh, it's lovely around here. This is where the Pleasure Dome used to be. We used to come over, come in on the road, just over on the other side over there. And it was a massive, big, great, big place. It was so much fun. I used to absolutely love coming. It was a real treat if you got to come here. And it's such a shame that it, that it sort of has gone into this state now. If you do get a chance, I don't know whether it might be on YouTube, could have a look on YouTube for um, Pleasure Island, Liverpool, and see what it was like. But the festival gardens have always been here. Um, they got reopened a few years ago, and you can imagine on a sunny day, it's absolutely gorgeous. But here we are in the rain, as per Actually, usual. If you look very closely, I've got that wrong. If you kind of really inspect it, that's a Chinese garden, not a Japanese. I've noticed it by the fact there it says Chinese gardens <laughs> big mistake and this is the Japanese gardens given away also by its sign of the Japanese gardens <laughs> now it's such a shame because these were actually restored in 2011 and it would have cost a lot of money to restore them and you think they would have at least spent a little bit of money to keep them restored and keep them looking good it's such a shame it's such a like, peaceful, lovely area in the city centre and then I spent all this money getting it ready then they spend all that money restoring it and they just let it go, let it go to rack and ruin. Terrible. So of course, heading back to the car and look, I'm going to take my hat off, my hood off because it stopped raining. I think the weather knows, doesn't it? The weather knows when you're getting out of the car and when you're getting back to it's like the, the car. Run, isn't it? Yeah, it's like the school run, yeah. 
we'll hopefully have some news <laughs> for you <laughs> on uh, when the motorhome is going to be ready. Original plans were that we were going to be uh, travelling away from Shrewsbury on the 12th. It's what the 8th today and we're still in Liverpool. Uh, so wish us luck. Um, if we're a day behind, it doesn't matter. If we're 10 days behind, it does matter. So we'll give you an update very shortly, hopefully. Welcome to day 154 million of rain. Uh, okay, where are we going today, we have, Isa? Um, first we have to one because of the rain. Yeah, and we're going to run into the cathedral. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we have to walk. We have to run to the cathedral. That's it. Because of the rain. That's it. So we're going to get in the car that we borrowed still from mother-in-law. And we're going to go to the cathedral and have a look around there. So, we'll see you there. That is silly. Oh, hello everybody. Um, look at my teeth. They're like vampire. See? Is that good? <laughs> um, so, we're just going to... Oh my god, that's because... Um, going to Nana and Granddad's because um sorry Dad <laughs> so that was a little video that I found that um Isha clearly borrowed my phone when I hadn't realised hope you enjoyed it so back to what we're here for now no, no, the no. cathedral it's windy. <laughs> So that was a bit stormy. This is the Anglican of Protestant Cathedral in Liverpool and it is gorgeous. I'm going to try and film in there but if I'm told we can't then I'll just take some photos because I know you can take photos in there. So let's go and have a look. How amazing is this? Architecture is absolutely stunning. Be quiet. Okay, okay. Okay, so this circle, it is, I tried to, this circle, the, the outer edge of the circle is directly underneath, right above there, that circle above there is where directly Above us is where the bell for the churches, for the cathedral is. And this outer circle here is the exact same size as that bell. And the bell is called Great George and it is the second largest church bell in the UK. The first being um, in St Paul's Cathedral. So there you go. Let me just show you this as well. So. Sir Giles Gilbert Scott was the architect of the cathedral and all of this stone, and Craig Maze have already told you this on the video, all of this stone come from a quarry in Walton, which is probably about six miles away from here. And it was all hand carved to fit. It's just so ornate. Um, all hand carved, we'll show you some of the tools in a minute that were used to create this stonework. I mean, look at the detail here. Just beautiful. Here we have the tools that were used by the stonemasons to create all of this beautiful stonework. As you can see, they're actually quite simple tools that were used. Everything was carved by hand. There's no machinery was used to make any of the stones. So you, you know, you can imagine the um, the skill of the workers to create this amazing uh, this, uh, this amazing structure. Amazing really to think of what has been created by such a simple, 
set of tools. So would highly recommend it. It's pretty decent. It's the boat. So if you didn't look through, I would highly recommend it. coming and paying a visit to the cathedral. Especially when the church bells are going, when the organ's going, it's just spectacular. So this is the Whispering Arch. Hello. Mm -hmm. So what means it's on the other side? But her voice is all the way over here. <laughs> there she is, staring at the wall as normal. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> so what I'd say about this is you, you don't need to be religious to appreciate <laughs> just how magnificent this this is. Um, you, architecture is absolutely amazing. You don't even need to like architecture to realise how amazing it is. Uh, we've been up the tower to the very top of the tower, which I think was £11 to go up. Uh, we went up there a few years ago. And I mean, you can see across all across Liverpool, all across Merseyside, it's absolutely amazing. The architect's mum um, asked him if he would be able to put a window in the um, in the cathedral. Obviously, you've got all these huge stained glass windows which are already pre-designed before the commission was given. And then she asked if he could put a window in for it, and there was nowhere really for him to be able to do it. So sneaky sneaky up there. His mum got a wish and a nice little stained glass window, a leaded window, was placed just over there, out of sight, but enough for his mum to know that she got a wish. So this is the Lady Chapel, actually chapel within the cathedral quiet now because the people down there no me and Leslie aren't particularly religious but we would actually used to come here when we lived in the area we would come here every it was every Thursday or every Friday every Friday to the service because it was such a lovely and positive kind of motivational service that the vicar would give it wasn't particularly religious based it was just motivational based, so it was such a lovely, lovely service to be part of. Now let's go downstairs and take a look at it. So as part of homeschooling or road schooling, what we do is we take every opportunity we can to, uh, to involve lessons. So today, we have a theory about religious education and uh, they need to understand a little bit more about things so she can make her own decisions as she's older. So that was just a short uh, insight and viewing of the uh, Anglican Cathedral in, uh, in Liverpool. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. It is a place well worth a visit. We were in here probably just over an hour, maybe an hour and 20 minutes. You could easily spend three to four hours in here looking at everything they've got. So, we're going off now. Hopefully it's not as windy. And uh, we'll see you soon, hopefully. Hopefully, and yet, whilst we're not religious, particularly, we did leave a little bit of a prayer for the motorhome and our journey. See you soon. Well, hello. Hi. Haven't we got smiles on our faces? <laughs> and it's nothing to do with the motorhome. Tonight, the grandparents are taking the kids and had tags of mum and dad are banished for the evening. Because tonight, we're just husband and wife enjoying ourselves down Lark Lane in Liverpool.
I've which is a, we haven't been here for years. In fact, it was the scene of our first date. Ooh, so we'll see you in the morning. Good morning. Uh, so um, the uh, motorhome has been taken to a HGV yard, uh, who guy who deals with trailers. Um, <laughs> was the reaction <laughs> the reaction proper, proper so, reaction. okay nice one mate yeah i kind of i'll ignore that bit um we know it's a <laughs> so he said he's going to start looking at it on friday how urgent is it as i like, kind of yesterday <laughs> um he'll start looking at it on friday and then um maybe monday uh possibly monday is he'll, you know if you can get it done he'll, he'll have it done <laughs> No, she'll look even maybe Tuesday's easy. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, we'll see. Um, we're off to my mum and dad's today. Uh, my dad's 90 soon, so happy birthday, dad, in a month's time. Um, so we're going out for a meal and uh, spend the night there. Back here to Liverpool tomorrow. And uh, just need somebody to mind the dog. Just in, yeah, just need to mind the dog for a few days. Just, um, I'd now stay with your parents' house because the motorhome's gone to the HGV place and my mum is allergic to the dog, so yeah. <laughs> poor mum's chest, you can hardly breathe when she's here, so we, we do not want the dog to be staying with us, so we need now to find somewhere for Valley to go, so yet another issue to sort of. <laughs> you nearly said the F word. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you? Oh, okay then. It was in my mind ready to come out. It was, it was, it was, it was green, okay, Anyway, so, we know things are going to get better. You're welcome, yeah. And we know we're going to be on our travel soon. We hate doing negative videos. So, we'll see you soon. Life. Yeah, we hate doing life videos. Yeah. We'll see you soon.